hi we are going to see about the operating system right so what is operating system which is an important one when you are using a system which is used to boot your system right so without os we cannot do anything in system without os system is act as a dummy right so os is a very very important one in system so we are going to see uh, in depth knowledge about os in this video so we are going to see lots of principles what all the technologies we are having what all the versions are we are having those things we are going to see in this video so right so <coughs> here <coughs> this is introduction part so we are going to see what is operating system what the operating system will do and what all the computer system organizations are there and then computer system architecture operating system structure operating system operations management process and memory management storage management protection security <coughs> kernel data structures computing environments and then open source os those things we are going to see in this video right so os is a very very important thing in a system without os we cannot do anything so what is os we will see in this video right so here <coughs> we will see the objectives of os right so describe the basic operations of computer systems and it is also provide the grand tour of major components of os that mean operating system it give an overview of many types of computing environments as well as it as well as it will explore several open source operating systems so this is our main objective of os so right so next one <coughs> what is an operating system actually operating system is a program so it is a program that act as an intermediary between user and computer and the hardware so os it is a program which will act as an intermediator between a computer and computer hardware computer user and computer hardware so it will act as an intermediator it is a normal simple program right so this is an operating system i think you are clear in what is an operating system it is a program that act as an intermediary between user of a computer and the computer hardware so what all the goals are there in os let's see one by one first one execute user programs and make solving your user problems easier it will make it uh, solve your problems what all the problems we are having that should be solved by using execute your user programs that is the first main goal of os second thing it will <coughs> make the computer system convenient to use by using os we can use the system is very convenient that is main second goal third one is uh, you, we can use the computer hardware in an efficient manner you, uh, this is the main goal so first one we can solve the problems easier by using execute of user programs and then second one is make the co computer system convenient to use third one is use the computer hardware is an efficient manner so these are all the main goals of os so this is a program and it will act as an intermediator between user of computer and the computer hardware <coughs> so next slide we are going to see the computer system structure so we are going to see the how os will be there how will be the structure is there those things we are seeing in this slide actually computer system can be divided into four components there are four components are there first one hardware and then second one operating system third one application programs fourth one is users <coughs> there are four main components are there in hardware they are providing basic computing resources 
so lots of resources are there in hardware example cpu central processing unit memory input output devices input devices are keyboard mouse output devices are monitor printer those are all comes under output devices so hardware it will provide basic computing resources to use second one is operating system it will control and coordinate of use of hardware among various applications and user so very very important it will control all the things it will coordinate all the things it will control and coordinate hardware as well as applications in our system as well as it control our user also so this is the main heart of our system so it will control everything third one is application program it will define the ways in which the system resources are used to solve the computing problem of the user this application program is it is a resource normal resource it are it is used to solve computing problems in the user right so example application programs uh, example word processors compilers video games database systems browsers those are all comes under application programs fourth one is users users means we are who are all using our system is called users it may be a people it may be a machine or other computers are called user so we have seen computer system structures there are four components first one hardware second one operating system third one application programs fourth one is users so hardware means it will provide basic computing resources operating system it will coordinate both hardware software and users everything it will coordinate right next one application programs <coughs> here in application programs it will give the way in which the system resources are used to solve the computing problems of the users so fourth one is user it may be a people or machine or other machines or the next one is <coughs> next one is there are four components of computer system we have seen right so here uh, <coughs> this is four components of computer system lots of users we are using user 1 user 2 user 3 okay like, likewise we are having n number of users right so here user 1 2 3 and etc so this is your components first one computer hardware that is in first level in second level we are having operating system in third level only we are having system and application programs so compiler assembler test editor database system those things are directly interact with the users this is the basic graphical diagram for components of computer system so computer hardware is in first level os is in second level in third level we are having system and application programs this only will interact with the users so this is a main concepts next one <coughs> next we will going to what operating system do so we will see um, what is the purpose of operating system what will do so those things we have seen in this slide depends of our point of view uh, user want convenience so if you are <coughs> going to um, work in a computer means you should need convenient comfort way you need you have to uh, use in very easy manner it should perform in good manner those things we need right don't care about resource utility utilization just you should need you have to use uh, easily uh, you need good performance those things you should need but shared computer such as main frame or mini computer must keep all users happy right users of dedicate systems such as workstations have dedicated resources but frequently use shared resources from servers handheld computers or resource poor optimized for usability and battery life some computers have little or no user interface such as embedded computers in devices and automobiles so <coughs> this is the use of os so next one operating system definition 
there are lots of definitions are there in uh, OS is an resource allocator so it will allocate the resources it will allocate the uh, resources as well as it will manage the resources and it will decide between the conflicting request for efficient and, for and fair resource use so this is uh, called resource allocation so operating system will do resource allocation it will allocate the resources for each and every user so it will control a program second thing is one is called it will control all the programs so what all the programs we are having in my system it will control all the programs it will prevent the errors it will um, prevent from improper use for all going to hack the data it will uh, maintain those data properly it will maintain properly it will give the privacy those things are given by OS so very very important definition so OS is a resource allocator as well as OS is a <coughs> OS is a control program so this is very very important next one is <coughs> o operating system definition see operating system definition so here no university universally accepted definition so everything a vendor ships when you are order an OS is a good approximation but varies widely the one program running at all the times on the computer is the kernel one program running at all the times on the computer is the kernel very very important so everything else is either a system program or application program. <coughs> Next one bootstrap program. This is used to, to load or power up which is used to reboot our system. So bootstrap program means it will whenever you are uh, power on your system this bootstrap program will be loaded at the beginning. It will power up. It will reboot. So typically stored in uh, ROM and EPROM, generally known as firmware. So it, the bootstrap program will be stored in ROM or EPROM, right? Initializes all aspects of systems and it will load the operating system kernel and starts execution. So this is the starting process whenever you are uh, make it power on your system, the bootstrap program will be loaded in the uh, starting stage. So uh, it will be stored in ROM and EPROM. So very very important thing bootstrap program. right? It will initialize all the aspects of system. Next we are going to see the organization of computer system. So here one or more CPUs device controllers connect through common bus providing access to shared memory. Concurrent execution of CPUs and devices competing for memory cycles. So here we are having CPU, disk controller, USB controller, graphics adapter. So these are all <coughs> called uh, controllers, right? Uh, lots of com uh, com components are there. Those components are connected into <coughs> memory, right? Here disk controller is controlling disk and the USB controllers are uh, controlling mouse, keyboard, printer. Graphics adapter, adapter controlling monitor. So this is the system organization, our computer system organization. The main components are CPU, disk controller and USB controller, graphics adapter. <coughs> Next, here IO devices and the CPU can execute current currently. It will execute simultaneously IO device and CPU. Each device controller is in charge of particular device type. Each device controller has a local buffer. So it will store some data locally. CPU moves data from to main memory or to from local buffers. Input output is, a is from the device to local buffer of controller. So device controller informs CPU that it has finished its operation by causing an interrupt. So interrupt means it will cause an message. It will uh, give a message you are having an intimation like this. So that is called the interrupt. So these are all uh, comes under computer system operations. Next one common functions of interrupts. Lots of functions are there in interrupt. 
so interrupt transfers control to the interrupt service routine generally through the interrupt vector so interrupt will give the service by using interrupt vector which contains the address of all the service routines so it's having addresses of all the service routines interrupt architecture must save the address of the interrupted instruction a trap or exception is a software generated interrupt caused either by an error or a user request an operating system is interrupt driven so these are all main common functions of interrupt so here we have seen interrupt vector that contains the address of all the service routines it will control the interrupt service and then we have seen trap or exception trap is also called an exception it is a software generated interrupt caused either by an error or a user request an operating system is interrupt driven right so next one is interrupt handling how we can handle the interrupt we are having lots of ways we here we are going to see two uh, interrupt handling techniques the operating system preserves the state of the cpu by storing registers and the program counter determines which type of interrupt has occurred polling vector the interrupt system so very very important these are all two interrupt handling techniques in our os by using these two techniques we have handled the interrupts in system so polling second one is what vector each and every interrupt handling techniques have different um things you have to follow those two procedures and you have to handle the interrupt separate segments of code determine what action should be taken for each type of interrupt right <coughs> <coughs> sorry this is interrupt timeline here we are having cpu and io device concept so user process executing if it is uh, high means it will come in up it will be low means the line come down 1 0 1 like ways so first one is called user process executing second in one is called io interrupt processing for io device we are having idle and transferring so if it is in up that is in idle stage if it is in down that is called transferring it will transfer the data if it is in up it will be in idle state so idle means it will never do anything it will be calm that is idle transferring means it's going to transfer the data right that is transferring so we have seen two timeline cpu and io device so this is the timeline diagram so next one is called <coughs> io structure after io starts control returns to the user program only upon io completion so here wait instructions idle the cpu until the next interrupt wait loop contention for memory access at most one io request is outstanding at a time no simultaneous io processing after io starts control returns the user program without waiting for the io completion so there are two things system call device status table request to the os to allow users <coughs> to wait for io completion that is system call device status table means it contains entry for each and every io device indicating its types address and state so system call and device status table is two concepts os indexes into io device table to determine device status and to modify table entry to include interrupt so next one we are going to see the storage definition and notation review the basic unit of computer storage is bit so bit contain one or two values 0 or 1 so all other storage in computer is based on collection of bits given enough bits it is amazing how many things a computer can represent numbers letters images movies sounds documents and programs a byte is 8 bits and on most computers it is the smallest convenient junk of storage for example most computers don't have an instruction to move a bit but do have one to move a byte a less common term is word which is given computer architectures native unit of data 
a word is made up of one or more bytes for example a computer that has 64 bit registers and 64 bit memory addressing typically has 64 bit 8 byte words a computer executes many operations in its native word size rather than a byte at a time <coughs> so here few <coughs> Computer storage along with most computer throughput is generally measured and manipulated in bytes and collection of bytes. A kilobyte, it is called KB, is 1024 bytes. A megabyte or MB, it is 1024 power square bytes. Next, GP, gigabyte, terabyte, TB and betabyte, PB. So, we are having equivalent bytes for those things. Right. Computer manufacturers often round off these numbers and say that a megabyte is 1 million bytes and a gigabyte is 1 billion bytes. Networking measurements are an exception to this general rule. They are given in bits because networks move data a bit at a time. Right. <coughs> Next one is storage structure. Main memory. Only large storage media that the CPU can access directly. Random access typically volatile. Secondary storage, extension of main memory that provides no large non-volatile storage capacity. Hard disk, rigid metal or glass platters covered with magnetic recording material. Disk surface is logically divided into tracks which are subdivided into sectors. The disk controllers determines the logical interaction between the device and the computer. Solid state disks faster than hard disk non-volatile. Various technologies becoming more popular. So these are all comes under storage structures in OS. So volatile and non-volatile. Right. Next one is storage hierarchy. We are having storage systems organized in a hierarchical manner. <coughs> It is in speed, it is based on speed, it is based on cost, it is based on volati vola volatility. Coaching. Copying information into faster storage system, main memory can be viewed as a catch for secondary storage. Device driver. For each device, controller to manage I.O. Provides uniform interface between controller and kernel. So this is a storage hierarchy. Right. <coughs> Next one is called... Uh, we are seeing in graphi graphical manner storage device hierarchy. First magnetic tapes and then optical disk, then hard disk, then solid state disk, then main memory, then catch. Finally we are having registers. So this is the storage device hierarchy representation. Next one is called catching. Important principle performed at many levels in a computer, in hardware, operating system, software. Information in use copied from slower to faster storage temporarily. Faster storage catch checked first to determine if information is there. If it is information used directly from the catch first. If not, data copied to catch and used there. Catch smaller than Storage being catched. Catch memory important design problem. Catch size and replacement policy. So these are all comes under catching technique. Next one is called direct <coughs> memory access structure. Direct memory access structure used for high speed IO devices able to transmit information close to memory speeds. Device controller transfers blocks of data from buffer storage directly to main memory without CPU intervention. Only one interrupt is generated per block there rather than one interrupt per byte. So per block it will generate only one interrupt rather than one interrupt per byte. So this is a direct memory access structure. How to modern, how a modern computer works, how it will work. This is a modern computer work uh, diagram here we are having instructions and data memory so instructions execution cycle will be attached to catch data movement is also in bi-directional between threat of execution catch and instructions and data so instruction execution cycle and data movement is in bi-directional between cpu and memory right 
so dma this direct memory access here it will handle interrupt data and input output re request from the devices to the cpu so it will handle by the dma direct memory access so this is the working of modern computer <coughs> next one is computer system architecture most systems uses a single general purpose processor most systems have special purpose processors as well multi processor systems growing in use and importance also known as parallel systems tightly coupled systems advantages include increased throughput economy of scale increased reliability graceful degradation or fault tolerance there are two types of multi processing asymmetric and symmetric asymmetric means each processor is assigned a specific task symmetric multi processing means each processor perform all the tasks so asymmetric means it will perform a specific task asymmetric means symmetric means it will perform all the tasks so next one symmetric multi processing architecture so we have seen already symmetric processor means symmetric multi processing means it will perform all the tasks so here memory is there it will attach to all the cpus more than one cpus are there so it will handle all the cpus work each and every cpu having registers and catch based on those things it will handle all the tasks at a time that is this is symmetric multi processing architecture next one <coughs> next one is dual core design so this is a dual multi chip or multi core here a memory is there <coughs> systems contain all the chips chase is containing multiple separate system so this is a diagram for dual core design right next one cluster systems like multi process system but multiple systems working together usually sharing storage via storage area network san storage area network provides high availability service which survives failures asymmetric clustering has one machine in hot standby mode symmetric clustering has multiple nodes running applications monitoring each other some clusters are for high perform performance computing hpc applications must be written to use parallelization some have distributed lock manager dlm to avoid conflicting operations so this is called cluster system this is an diagrammatical representation of cluster system here storage area network is there so this is connected to more than one computer each and every computers are interconnected together so this is an example for clustering systems so operating system structure multi programming is called batch system it's need for efficiency single user cannot keep cpu and io devices busy at all times multi programming organizes jobs code and data so cpu always has one to execute a subset of total jobs in system is kept in memory one job selected and run via job scheduling when it has to wait for i will example os which is to another job time sharing it is also called as multitasking is a logical extension in which cpu switches jobs so frequently that users can interact with each job while it's running creating interactive computing response time should be less than one second so response time should be less than one second each user has at least one program executing in memory process if several jobs ready to run at the same time cpu scheduling will handle if process don't fit in memory swapping moves them in and out to run virtual memory allows execution of processes not completely in memory <coughs> here the memory layout for multi programmed systems we are having operating system this operating systems having in address 0 to 512m it's having lots of jobs so this is for multi programming system layout operating systems operations interrupt driven both hardware and software hardware interrupt by one of the devices software interrupt exception or trap right software error example division by 0 this is an uh, software error request for os service other process problems include infinite loop processes modifying each other or the operating system this is an operations of operating system dual mode operations allow os to protect itself and other operating system components user mode 
and kernel mode so user mode <coughs> and kernel mode is there mode bit provided by the hardware the hardware will provide the mm, kernel bit right so it will provide the mode bit provides ability to distinguish when system is running user code or kernel code some instructions designated as privileged only executable in kernel code system call changes mode to kernel written from call resets its to user increasingly cpu support multi mode operations that is virtual machine manager vmm made for guest vms so next one is transition from user to kernel mode time to prevent infinite loop process hogging resources timer is set to interrupt the computer after some time period keep a counter that is decremented by the physical clock os <coughs> os set the counter privileged instructions when counter 0 generates an error set up before scheduling process to regain control or terminate program that exceeds allotted time user process scheduling here we are having a diagram user process executing call system call written from system call here we are having kernel execute all the system calls user mode bit is 1 means it is user mode mode bit is 0 this is kernel mode if it is 1 that is user mode if it is 0 that is kernel mode that's all this is a transition from user to kernel next one process management process is a program in execution it is a unit of work within the system program is a passive entity uh, process is an active entity process needs resources to accomplish its task cpu memory io files initialization data process termination requires uh, reclaim of any reusable resources single threaded process has one program counter specifying location of next instruction to execute so this is process management these are all activities creating and deleting both user and system process suspending and resuming process providing mechanisms for process synchronization providing mechanisms for process communication providing mechanisms for deadlock handling these are all activities in process management next one memory management to execute program uh, all of the instruction must be in memory all of the data that is needed by the program must be in memory memory management activities keeping track of which parts of memory are currently being used and by who designing which process and data to move into out of memory allocating and deallocating memory space as needed this is storage management os provides uniform and logical view of information storage file system management file usually organized into directories access control on most systems to determine who can access what os activities are creating and deleting files and directories primitive primitives to manipulate files and directories mapping files onto the secondary storage backup files onto the stable storage media next one this is mass storage management uh, the activities of mass storage management is free space management storage allocation disk scheduling some storage need not be fast territory storage includes other optical storage magnetic tape still must be managed by os or applications varies between worm worm means write once read many times and or w read write so w o r m means read once read sorry write once read many times the or w means read write <coughs> this is the performance of various levels of storage and then here migra migration of data a from disk to register so this is io subsystem memory management of io including buffering and then caching spooling everything general device derive interface drivers for special specific hardware devices this is a protection and security part it is a mechanism for controlling all access of processes and it will give the security and external attacks so here systems generally first distinguish among users to determine who can do what user identifiers user id and security ids include name and associated number one per user user id 
that should be associated with all files processes of that user to determine access control group identifier group id last one is privilege escalation next one this is data structure for kernel lots of things are they singly linked list doubly linked list circular linked list there are three types of data structure single linked list double linked list and circular linked list so this is a binary search tree left and right we are going to check one first the left should be less than than right so we have this is the performance of is of o of n okay so here the bin balanced binary search tree means o of log n so here we are giving one example for binary search tree it will check the left and right and then it will move downwards from left to right <coughs> next one this is the hash function we are using to create hash map so here hash function here we are going to give the key based on the key we are going to check the value bitmap string of n binary digits representing the status of n items linux data structures defined in include files next one computing environments here we are using porters network computers wireless networks firewalls comes under computing environments handheld smartphones tablets those things comes under computing environments here distributed computing we are seeing collection of separate possibly heterogeneous systems networked together is called distributed computing examples are local area network wide area network metropolitan area network personal area network so yeah, lan ban man pan so these are all uh, some <coughs> common networks right we are using computing environments here client server computing client will give the request server will response the request right so here we are having server in between we are having network so client will give the request it will server get the request and response to this request so this is the client server computing here p2b does not distinguish clients and servers instead of all nodes are considered peers may each act as a client server or both node must join p2p network here we are ip we have seen new thing voice over ip protocol it is a protocol next computing environments emulations visualizations we are seeing in this and then this is an example for visualization Uh, this is uh, computing environments for cloud computing there are many types public cloud private hybrid then we are having lots of services uh, yes yes software as a service p yes platform as a service l yes infrastructure as a services and then this is a diagram for computing environments cloud computing this is real time embedded systems Mm, here open source operating systems are there closed source and then counter to copy protection and digital rights management drm moment started by free software foundation it will start this and then we are having lots of example gnu linux bsd unix mac os x right thank you hope this this video will be useful for you uh, try to learn lots in this video thank you